Um, so, hi, my name is Thomas. Um, I work for a company uh, that I co-founded. The name is Meet and Learn. And uh, we work on an online marketplace for education, uh, connecting students with good teachers for private lessons. And um, I would like to share some of our experience with, uh, with Vagrant. Um, so, yeah. So this is the structure of the presentation. I like this stuff very simple. Uh, first, I'll tell you why even use uh, something like a, like a virtual uh, development environment. Um, what's the reason? Then what actually Vagrant is, and then uh, something practical. Uh, how to set it up, how to get started. Uh, you will see that it's very simple. And also, the, the presentation is uh, beginner level, I don't consider myself to be any kind of expert in this. Just felt like sharing the experience might help. Um, okay, we can get started. So, why? There, and I also feel that this is often missing uh, on developer talks, the, the reason why. And I think um, there are a couple of very good reasons why you should use uh, virtualized development environment. The first big reason is uh, to somehow be able to follow the production or to copy the production environment. Um, meaning you have a project that is running, I don't know, PHP 5.3 and uh, you are a Linux geek and you have the newest version of everything. And sometimes it will happen that uh, things will work for you but will not work on production, which is not good. Um, so that's one reason, and that even works for one person. So I think you don't uh, you don't have to be a big team to have a reason to use something like this. Um, the other reason is even if you're one if you're a one person and you have multiple projects that one is new and one is old, how do you then switch the environment so that they are kind of the same as on the production machine? So. That's another good reason why you should virtualize your development environment. And then uh, I think the biggest uh, use case is in teams. So let's say you're two or more people and you are working maybe on a different hardware or different operating systems, then it makes sense to, to have the, the environment uh, virtualized and so that you all work on the same thing and I think the most um, like the biggest use case for me that, that I realized that this is really worth to use is when you're onboarding a new team member then I've, I've seen it that uh, it costed my colleague that was an expert and I was a newbie in, in the team it costed him a day of work and me a day of work to set up the project so that I could actually be on the point zero, so that I could actually start working. So, and that's a lot of money if you consider it from the company perspective. It's a lot of money to pay two days for nothing, you know. Um, okay, go on. So, uh, Vagrant is one method how you could solve this, uh, this kind of problems. So, it's, you basically take the, the environment that you work with and put it somewhere in a box. Uh, usually, Vagrant is run on a virtual machine, but it can be run on uh, Amazon Web Services and a couple of different other providers. Uh, the advantages are that you can configure uh, the environment however you like it. That means that uh, you have full control on what is running on the on the machine that you then work with. Um, whatever old, obscure version of whatever you need can be run on the server, and everybody has the same thing. It's reproducible. You can take the whatever version and put it to some uh, to your colleague computer, and it will work the same. Uh, yeah, and that's also portability. Switch. Um, okay, and practically, 
you have this machine that is run in, in a virtual box, but you still work on your computer with your editor as you're, as you're used to. So you use PHP Storm or whatever uh, on your hardware. And then files are being copied from your computer to the virtual machine on the background. And so it's mirrored to the virtual machine. And then you access the, the virtual machine via uh, SSH. You can log in in, in the terminal. Or uh, you put an IP of the virtual machine inside the browser. And you, you communicate it this way. And uh, there will also be a video how you can set a, a name. So you basically could work uh, with something like myproject.local, and that will direct you to the virtual machine. Uh, so it's very simple to work that way. Yeah, okay, next slide. What's needed, it's just two things. Vagrant, uh, that's available, I think, in, in standard.dep or something like that. Um, and there is the download page, it's very simple, and VirtualBox, that's all you need. Uh, so, very simple. Uh, yeah, that's right. And then, uh, once you have these two things installed, you run this command, Vagrant init, which basically puts uh, a small text file called Vagrant file inside the, the project folder. And in this Vagrant file, you can basically set up um, the machine, what kind of base box it uses. Oh, you can click next slide. This is how it looks. This is the simple setup. So it basically just says, um, use box Ubuntu Trust D64. That's it. And um, next slide. <coughs> Once you run Vagrant up, uh, it will download the box from the internet, and the box will be accessible by SSH. Slide. Uh, and then you can also do stuff with the box once it's there. So this is, uh, it will get longer and longer, but not too long. Um, so basically you can run a script after the, the machine boots, and you can basically in, in the shell script, or you can, uh, I think, also use different kinds of uh, ways how to write the recipe, what should happen uh, once, the, once the machine is loaded. So you can install Apache, install MySQL, download uh, some kind of development version of database. This can all be done in, in this shell script. Uh, this is how you set up the the network access to the machine. So you set an IP address, uh, and you can forward the port to the machine. So if you would access uh, this 8080 IP, and then you put port 4567, it would direct you within the virtual machine to port 80. Is it OK with the? Yep. OK, next slide. Uh, that's maybe too soon. I wanted to show you videos, how it works in, uh, how it looks uh, in reality. So, so it's really like that simple. Um, okay, so I'll pause it just. Um, what this basically does is uh, it's downloading uh, a box that is uh, pre-configured with everything. Uh, there are different kind of boxes, not just plain Ubuntu something or plain Debian, but you can also download um, a box that already has things installed. So this Scotch box has uh, Apache installed, uh, MySQL installed, PHP installed. Um, and this command will basically just copy the Vagrant file into your folder. Um, uh, let's see. So it's just something like this. Nothing else. 
Um, yeah. Um, so with Vagrant up, it will download the box and basically start it. That was how you start the project and uh, how you start the machine and this is how you access it. So it really is big enough uh, and then you access the machine and uh, this is a short video how you set up a, a host name for the machine. So you basically just put the IP address and then some name. Uh, so he called it my new app, and then you can use my new app in the browser. Yeah. Ta-da! That's it. Okay, that's all. If you have, if you have any questions, I hope I will be able to uh, answer. But feel free to ask. You mentioned you need the virtual box to run Vagrant. Yeah. Uh, you need any virtual machine, or does it have to be virtual box? Like, can I use VMware instead of virtual box? Or uh, there are different. They call it providers, uh -huh. and uh, I think uh, VMware is useful. Uh, there is, I think you can run it directly on Amazon Web Services. Um, maybe there are a couple different options, but uh, I just know the virtual box option. And uh, maybe one more question about the boxes. So you download the box with some pre-installed software from somewhere, from cloud. Uh, so if uh, the, the box uh, will not exist anymore in the cloud, then the process is broken. Can you have your own provider of the boxes or storage? Yes, I think you, there is a way uh, that you just store an image somewhere and uh, you can share this directly. Uh, but then usually the how it works is that you have some kind of basic uh, machine, just a bare operating system and then you run your scripts on it. So normally you would just download uh, a plain version of Ubuntu and then install everything that you need. Yeah. Uh, and the machine has uh, the same IP address for the whole time? Yeah, you set it up in the in the Vagrant file. Okay. So you said that, uh, yeah. Yeah, and the Vagrant uh, uses the virtual box, I think. Yeah. And I can share also. I can share the files via SH, SSH or yeah, so Vbox SF or NFS. Yeah, um, you mean from your computer to the yeah, virtual yeah. box? Yeah, yeah. My question is about the performance with the with sharing. Yeah, that's um, it's a good question. I've never had a problems with this. Uh, it's good that you know about it. I've seen. Uh, things where images were kind of cached in the browser yep. and I, I made some changes uh, in my computer and it wasn't really reflected. But uh, once you know about this, uh, I have never felt that uh, 
the files are not being copied or are being copied slow. Mm -hmm. So th this was never an issue for mm -hmm. me. And how about uh, the watchers? If I want some group watch or grand watch or, or something watch, so <coughs> the watchers must run in the in the machine, no? Uh, I don't do that personally. I run it in a, in PHP Storm, for example. Okay. So, um, so it's like I change the file, okay. but I think it should work uh, without any problems. Like, uh, why not? Okay. It's just mm -hmm. it changes here and changes there. So I yeah. think. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Just be honest. So. My message would just be uh, try it. I think it's really worth it, and it's really simple, as you've seen. It's really three commands. Okay, you will have to learn some stuff around if you want to really configure it to your needs, but it's always like that. I would say. So, yeah. Okay. Thanks.